Airport. Uh, October meeting for uh, the occurring of my child. This will be our last meeting for this council. Uh, we'll start with the prayer. We ask for guidance and blessing on this council. May the true needs and well-being of our communities be our concern. Help us, your service leaders, to remember that all our decisions are made in the best interests of the people, culture, and environment of occurring of my child. Amen. Right. We'll have the knowledge of the country. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting. We pay our respects to the elders past and present. So, um, welcome everyone. Um, this is the, uh, as I said earlier, this is the last meeting of this council before uh, the elections this weekend. So, uh, this will be the last time that we're all gathering as a council. I'll introduce our councillors, starting on my right with councillor Helen Duran. Councillor Leslie Brown, Councillor Simon, uh, Simon Illingworth, um, myself, Manny El Trotter, Councillor Ruth Strain, Councillor Joe Beard, and Councillor G Geraldine, uh, Geraldine Cadani. Um, I'd like to acknowledge anyone who's joining us online. Good evening. Um, it's uh, probably uh, not a huge meeting tonight, but we've got quite a bit of important stuff to get through. Um, do we, Mr Mason, do we have any apologies? Uh, Mr Mayor, there are no apologies for tonight's meeting um, and there are no conflicts of interest that have been declared. Right. Councillors, can we have someone confirm the amendments of the previous meeting? <coughs> Councillor Brown, do we have a seconder? Councillor Canadian? Councillor Brown? Yeah. All those in favour? Carried. Um, deputations and presentations, we don't have any. Mayor's report, we'll start into that. Um, it's uh, in my final report. Um, I probably don't intend to rehash of what's, what's in the uh, uh, meeting notes at the moment. Uh, they're available, they'll be available on, on, on the website. Um, 
so I don't intend to sign off on that to any great degree. But firstly, I'd like to thank all my fellow councillors, both uh, present and past, for their consideration and support during my time on council and for the last two years um, in my term as mayor. For a diverse group of individuals representing different communities and the Shire as a whole, we managed to operate in the best interests of our constituents for the majority of the time. This is mainly due to having respect for the democratic process and for each other as individuals. I would also like to thank our staff and senior management for their assistance and guidance uh, and forbearance. Um, local government is a diverse and constant change, uh, constantly changing dynamic process. And as decision makers, we, re we rely heavily on staff for back background, background briefings, information and impartiality from our officers so that we can make uh, informed decisions. I'd like to thank um, the CEO, Andrew. I feel I've uh, developed a, a good working rela relationship in my time as mayor, and I uh, thank him for his open door policy in Canberra. Um, the, maintaining, uh, the maintaining of the division between politic and operation, uh, operational is sometimes a balancing act, and um, I'm grateful that we were able to discuss any topics candidly while have, um, having mutual respect for each other's position. I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about probably um, some of the, uh, the future for the for Council. Um, despite the current impact on the coronavirus and the, con of, of the consequences that may follow, I'm optimistic about the future of the Shire. We can live our lives in fear and trepidation or seek a way forward. The manner, manner in uh, which our communities have responded to this pan pandemic gives me hope for the future and has reinforced my belief that we have a great capacity to recover and find a way forward. In the Shire, the fundamental elements on which uh, to build and recuperate are very good. The annual report and the financial statements uh, for the year you will see that Council is well placed to capitalise on these factors and navigate a course back to a positive territory. In some ways, this pandemic has, pandemic has highlighted what country people already know, is that we have a great uh, quality of life, clean air, wide open spaces, and communities who support each other in times of adversity. If we continue to pick care for the fundamentals, uh, the, watching our indebtedness, staying healthy, informed, and being responsive to the changing circumstances, we should be able to meet the challenges ahead. There will be formidable challenges facing the new council. The tourism industry has been severely impacted and is facing a, a prolonged period of recovery. Unemployment levels have increased dramatically in a short period of time, and this is uh, particularly concerning for females and our youth. Social disadvantage is magnified and our social support networks are facing increased demand and tightening fiscal constraints by state and federal governments. It is vital that we do not allow fear and self-interest to prevent us from moving forward, to care for those or to care for those who have been adversely impacted as a result of this virus. <coughs> There are a number of positives on which we can build. We still need a plan, and we still need to plan and create for the future. We need to identify our strengths and capitalise on what is working well. Our agricultural sector is showing huge promise. This shire has a diverse and highly productive agricultural sector and is well placed as a food and fibre bowl for the state. Our tourism sector has the capacity to recover and adjust. It can continue to grow given time and adequate support. We are fast becoming an energy hub for the state with emerging forms of new, uh, renewable energy together with natural gas, hydrogen production and storage. We have the capacity to value add to our farming sector with increased, manufactu uh, increased manufacturing of food and fibre. We have the potential to further diversify 
our agricultural act output by attracting more intensive farming models and producing vegetables, fruit and boutique foods. Regional, uh, regionally, we have unmet capacity in our schools and education facilities. We uh, need to be careful not to allow negatives uh, to limit our potential. I wish uh, the incoming council all the best. There's a lot to look forward to, and I think you will be in for a, uh, a challenging but exciting time. Thank you. Um, I'll invite um, former Mayor Jo uh, Beard to make comment. She was um, part of uh, Mayor for two years of this town, so Jo. Yeah, thank you and through you, Mayor. Um, I appreciate the opportunity, obviously, to um, write this report alongside you, um, having served the first two years of this council as the Mayor, so thank you for this opportunity. Most of what I have said whilst I was Mayor was when I stepped down when Neil was voted in, but a couple of things have um, obviously happened that were set in train during my time as Mayor that would be nice to just recap on, and obviously I just want to um, say a few things for Neil as well. I think um, a lot of people don't always understand until you're in the position that you literally live and breathe being the mayor um, the entire time. And you go from being in that position where you're privy to certainly a lot of information and, and high level information at that too. And then you step back and then you can reflect upon the, the time you were a mayor, but also the amount of information you're, you're part of, but the decision making process and the projects that you could advocate on. And um, I was fortunate enough to have Neil as my deputy mayor and um, I was very much comfortable with him being our mayor, knowing how he supported me and, and obviously the way in which he engaged, not only at a regional level, which is critically important when we talk about strategic planning, not only for our communities, but also at a regional level. Neil always um, was able to get along well and had a great network with state and federal governments as well. So um, I knew full well when Neil was deputy that he'd step right into that role of mayor very easily. Um, so Neil, I'm sure you'll find your mind will be probably ready for a break, <laughs> um, but it certainly does run at that high level for a long period of time. So I'm certainly going to miss your knowledge and your life experience around the table. It certainly, I would like to think that it rubbed off on me. Um, you've always been quite a calming influence at the council table. So a lot of the things that um, we talk about in our Mayor report and a lot, of the, a lot of the outcomes and achievements that we can reflect on is because of your input um, throughout those years some of which was particularly the uh, Shipwreck Coast Master Plan. I know you had a genuine interest in that, being from down that way and, you know, all your life. And um, so a lot of your advocacy to achieving that over our term in this last council, um, a lot of that was attributed to you. So thank you for your time with that. Um, I think it's important too that we reflect on the role of advocacy and, and as a mayor, um, you, could, you do when you speak on behalf of your council, but any time you're given the opportunity or the chance, any time you're given an inch, you take a mile when you're advocating on behalf of our communities. And that was certainly always the case with our roads. <laughs> um, we know that that is certainly a priority for our communities. And um, to get some small wins here and there, um, it really does mean a lot. And probably one we haven't we haven't identified because it actually doesn't fit within Crangmite Shire, but is the Blue Church announcement that was only recently made a couple of weeks ago. Um, we've advocated for that for so many years because we know that our communities, our residents travel that road from Colac um, to our Shire and that it's been a significant safety concern of ours for a long time. So um, I'm sure, Neil, you would have been advocating just as I was um, through my term as Mayor to have that that particular area looked at, so it's great to know that that has certainly been identified. Um, another one recently, which obviously is your term as mayor, has been the Hampton Special School Junior Campus and the Train Peter Four College um, announcement, which when I was mayor, we begun um, that advocacy in supporting both school councils on getting that outcome that they only re had announcement for only a couple of weeks ago. So it's, um, we take those wins when we can, um, but certainly the role of the Mayor, that often there's never any training when you get thrown in a, a natural emergency, like I had with St Patrick's Day fires, 
um, you have had with the pandemic, like completely no training for how we lead our communities with that at all, but it's because we have amazing people around us being counsellors and, and the organisation um, and their staff is why we get to do what we do and, and hopefully do our jobs well. So thank you, Neil, for your support and thank you for being an amazing mayor too. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Can I have someone move uh, acceptance of the report? Councillor Brown, do we have a seconder? Councillor Durand, Councillor Brown. Okay, thank you through you, Mr Mayor. I would like to congratulate Mayor Trotter and Councillor Baird on their outstanding leadership and direction during their mayoral terms. This term of council has certainly had its many challenges and with their leadership and support from our officers and staff, we've been able to manage and get through all of this with excellent results. This report highlights the many achievements and challenges of this council term. We have kept moving forward to support our communities and have arrived stronger and in a very good position for the future. So thank you. Councillor Durand. Thank you, and through you, Mayor. Uh, so much has happened over the past four years and it's easy to forget the many achievements of this council over its entirety when we've been so heavily focused on the issues around COVID-19. So thank you for a really comprehensive report that brought back a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of things for me that, I, that had slipped my mind. The amount of work involved in being a mayor is huge at the best of times, and I know I have only seen a small part of it, but the trio of fire, flood, and pandemic brought with it an even bigger workload for you both. I would like to thank you for your strong leadership and integrity and congratulate you both for the dedicated and pro professional way you've gone about represent representing council and the Shire as a whole. So thank you very much. Councillor Gray. Councillors, any further comment? I'll put the motion. Can someone, uh, all those in favour? Carried. We'll move on to uh, item 8, 8.1, Audit and Risk Committee Biannual Report to Council October 2020. Mr Ray, thank you. Uh, Mayor, thank you and, and through you. Uh, this report is presented on behalf of Mr Colin Heyman, Chair of Council's newly established Audit and Risk Committee. The report uh, is a requirement under the Local Government Act and also Council's Charter. Uh, the report is provided uh, also as required under the Act immediately after uh, the committee meeting uh, that considered the financial statements and performance statements. Uh, the report details the activities undertaken by uh, the current <coughs> committee and former committee under the 89 Act during the 1920 financial year. Uh, and the report also documents uh, the committee's uh, assessments of its own performance and also that of uh, Council's internal auditor. The com committee, uh, importantly, recognises the need for continuous improvement uh, in enhancing uh, its own performance. Uh, it's pleasing that the committee continues to work effectively. Uh, there was a change of membership uh, of the committee during the year. Uh, Ms Philippa D was appointed by council in February of this year, who replaced Mr Andrew Jeffers, who retired after serving six years. Uh, Mayor, the report's provided for information and the next buy-in report uh, will be presented to Council in April 2021. Thank you. Thanks, Mr Ray. <coughs> Councillors, can I have someone move the, the uh, acceptance of the report? Councillor Durant, seconded Councillor Brown. Councillor Durant. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I have been pleased to be a member of the Audit and Risk Committee for the past two years, contributing to the important job it does in overseeing the internal controls and risk, fun risk functions of Council. We've been very fortunate in having a very conscientious and capable chairperson in Mr Colin Heyman, and I thank him and acknowledge the time and effort he has put into his role. I would uh, urge members of the new Council to consider being on this committee, as it does give a very in-depth appreciation of how Council goes about identifying risk and ensuring it carries out its required functions in a way that meets all required regulations and standards. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Through you, Mr Mayor. Um, the Audit and Risk Committee continue to fulfil their role of overseeing financial reporting, monitoring the participation of management and external auditors, legal compliance and general governance of the organisation. This report is comprehensive and clearly identifies the many issues and tasks that have arisen during this term. 
This committee has responsibly discussed and reviewed issues and I continue to support this process as a clear and open forum and it has been a pleasure to be a member of this committee and I thank all the members for their um, welcoming when I first came on and, and inclusiveness. So I support this recommendation. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Brown. Councillors, any further discussion? Councillor Gestrang. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mr Mayor. As you can see, the, uh, this report that's being put up by the Audit and Risk Committee just shows the, the broad range, very comprehensive list of topics that are covered by the Audit and Risk Committee. There's a lot of work involved in, in being on this committee and I'd just like to thank um, Councillor Durand and Councillor Brown for the, the time and effort that they put on representing uh, Council and, and yourself also, Mr Mayor, I see you've attended all meetings. Um, you know, we might be, we were talking earlier around the Ombudsman's report at the City of Warrnambool and we can see that um, the credit card usage by the Mayor and the CEO is scrutinised by the Audit and Risk Committee um, every, at every meeting. So that's a really good uh, process that, that's been put into to place so that people can be sure that, um, that nothing like that's happening. Here. Um, so thank you to Councillor Durant, Councillor Brown and also the independent members ably led by Mr Heyman for their contribution. Thank you. Thanks Councillor Strain. Councillors, any further comment? I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Carried. We'll move on to, um, there's no planning reports tonight. We'll move on to uh, item number 10, officers reports, 10.1 annual report 2019-2020. Um, Mr Mason, thank you. Uh, thank you, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, in one sense, this report is largely procedural in that we have to prepare an annual report um, as required by the Local Government Act. In another sense, the annual report provides, I think, an opportunity to reflect on what's been um, an unusual 12 months. The re report identifies the many uh, fantastic projects that this council has delivered for its <laughs> communities, as well as the broad range of services uh, that Craig Whiteshire delivers. Uh, I think that it's fair to say that the report looks fantastic, uh, and I'd like to recognise uh, the great work uh, Brooke Barnwell and Penny McDonald have done putting the report together. Uh, I think uh, it, we've, the annual report's been uh, de developed and designed in-house and um, I think the fact that it looks so good is, is a great testament to their, their work effort, efforts. I think in closing, the, the success of Crankermite Shire as outlined in the annual report is really due to a good combination of councillors and staff being able to work together well um, and respect um, for each other's roles. And I think uh, that, that means that we can, as an organisation and as a, a council, really focus on delivering what's important to our communities. So uh, the, the annual report is there for the council to, uh, to consider, as is required by the Act, but I think it's also, <coughs> I'd encourage councillors to reflect on um, the great achievements within it. Thank you. Thanks, Mr Mason. Uh, councillors, uh, the report is before you. Can I have someone move acceptance of the report? Councillor Gustain, seconded Councillor uh, Baird. Councillor Gustain. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and through you. And I concur with Mr Mason. I think this is probably one of the, the best annual reports that I've seen. So well done to Ms Barnwell and uh, Mrs MacDonald in preparing it. Um, it's interesting that uh, reading through it, just the information that you do glean, and it was, it was quite interesting to see that we'd had 13 council meetings and made 178 decisions in the past 12 months, with only seven being made um, under confidential items. So I think that shows that Corangamite Shire is very much open and transparent in their decision making. It also highlighted the heavy investment that we make in our local road network with 914 kilometres of sealed road and 1,229 kilometres of gravel road. Obviously, the roads is our biggest spend in our budget every single year. Last year, we spent 8.4 million um, on the local road network and 450,000 on improvements to drainage work. This is uh, obviously Council's commitment to improving the local road network, which has improved significantly over the last 10 years. And, uh, and I don't think that's in a small uh, way, apart from Council making the investment, but also the investment that comes from the Federal Government uh, through Roads to Recovery funding that we spend on the road network. There's also been a lot of, uh, a lot of money spent on slashing and weed control. However, 
the customer satisfaction rating on roads continues uh, to, to waver. It's not good, and I think that we really are being brought down by the 604 kilometres of arterial roads. Um, this council has advocated heavily to Regional Roads Victoria and the state government around the, the arterial road network. They're the major connector roads throughout our shire, and I think that the new council is going to have to continue um, advocating strongly to try and get some real dollars spent in the, the arterial road network. I'd like to thank uh, Mr Mason and all of the staff in, uh, in delivering the projects that they've had. The report cards here show the impact that the, the reports, have, the works have had, projects have had as a result of the COVID-19, which has been quite significant. But uh, despite that, there's been a lot of really excellent projects delivered. So I certainly congratulate the staff on delivering those. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Gustrain. Councillor Beard. Yes, through you, Mr Mayor, and I actually think Councillor Gustrain may have looked at some of my notes prior to her words, but anyway, um, certainly if um, any of our viewers out there, this is a, a huge document that's getting bigger, but it's actually getting better um, from year to year. I'm every year, and those that have been around me for the last almost 10 years will know that I think I say this is the best read that we put out. It's the most... Um, how could we say, it, it's actually relatable. So it, it could be anybody, young or older, in our community and there'd be something in there that you could relate to and see exactly what this council stands for and is all about. I'd like to thank and reiterate what Mr Mason said about the work that Brooke Barmel has done to be able to do this in-house. Um, this is an incredible document. The design work that's gone into this to make it, as I said, relatable, um, the transparency, the accountability, everything's here. So between her and obviously Penny MacDonald, um, everyone should be really proud of this document. Um, I'd like to um, just talk about a few things in relation to the, to the report. Um, when we said about it being all about the transparency, accountability, both Council Gustrain and I have said that, it's not only a council for us to be proud of, but also for our staff each of whom, every single one of our staff members contribute in some way or another to the, the report and how it's identified. Um, so to each and every one of the staff, I'd like to say thank you. Um, one of the, probably my favourite page in here is how $100 of, of our rates get spent um, within council services. Um, and certainly almost 50% or $50 within the $100 that we would pay on our rates is spent on our local road, on our road network, which is what our, um, which is what our rate payers want and expect. But when you look at all the amount of different services that we provide, um, there's a really clear breakdown on where every dollar is spent of your 100. So that's a really good snapshot if anyone just even wants to read one page. That's a really good thing to look at. Uh, once again, we didn't um, borrow any money, which was obviously a plan that was set in place. Um, the council prior to this council had a strategic direction in terms of taking on no new debt and then repaying back the borrowings. Um, this council has obviously been able to achieve that quicker than what we first anticipated in terms of our plan, um, but it's great to see that um, this council certainly didn't take on any more debt. Uh, we invested um, almost $9 million, as Councillor Gustrain spoke to, about upgrading our local roads, our own local roads, and, and particularly work on the drains, um, which isn't always reflected, as also Councillor Gustrain said, about in our community satisfaction survey, that I still believe people get our roads, our local roads, mixed up with the arterial road network, which even we complain about those all the time. Um, but if we, I think if when we ask a question on which road they're talking about, it's always an arterial road or a Vic Roads road that people will actually complain about. So it's unfortunate that um, it doesn't get reflected as well in our satisfaction survey. Our advocacy continues to get funding for a really important piece of work, which is the North-South Loop. Um, obviously to help, not only help keep our local drivers safe, but also our tourist drivers. And also some funding for the, um, the freight roads that are, are informing our dairy supply chain study, which was done um, <coughs> with our other neighbouring councils. Um, so that's two really critical pieces of advocacy that will continue, um, that obviously has been identified in the annual report. 
Uh, for over 15 years, or 15 years, the 12 A's trail had been, we'd been advocating and supporting of, of that particular project, and you'll notice in the annual report that finally we got the funding for that, so that project has been started. Uh, there was um, the youth strategy, the SYNC youth strategy, which only not, not many months ago we actually adopted here at Council. When we think about 25% of our young people in our community, that's what, that's what makes up our Corangamite Shire residents. So it's, we actually have a piece, a strategic piece, that will support their livability and the, pro, and the services that we provide to them. Um, you'll also notice in the report that there was an audited and then an endorsed new municipal emergency management plan. Now, we talked briefly before about the different emergencies we've had. We've had fire, flood, a bombing. Um, we've had sea, you know, sea tragedies, road accidents, even a tornado event, and then now, obviously, the pandemic of COVID. There's multiple agencies that form part of our response and recovery to that. So um, the fact that we have a really significant plan that we recently adopted um, that's identified in this report is a really major step forward. We have really positive relationships with all those agencies and, um, and going forward that is something that we'll need to continue to maintain for the benefit of our communities. Even the fact that we're live streaming, I think we need to celebrate that, that our our community members get to see what we do to a degree. Um, this is obviously part of the decision making. There's so much more, but it's nice to think that we can actually get more input um, in a different platform now. So that's been something that we should be celebrating. And um, obviously we were able to signal the $4.8 million for the stimulus for the COVID recovery, which was a huge effort by this council identified in the report on um, helping our communities recover from such, such a significant issue that's happened globally. So once again, as an organisation compared to other large rural shires, we well and truly perform above the average. Uh, this is a huge reflection on not only us as a council, but more importantly, our staff that have obviously led by our CEO, Mr Mason, and they certainly get things done. So I just want to say on behalf of this report, and um, I'm just always thrilled when we get to this point each year, um, but it really is, if there's ever a document for our community people to read, it's this one. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Beard. Councillors, any further comment? Yes, can I just make Councillor Brown. Thank you, through you, Mr Mayor. Uh, this annual report is an outstanding document clearly demonstrating the excellent work of our council. The many highlights, new funding for many projects that have been on the books for a long time, the future planning such as the rural living strategy, streetscapes and a strong financial position without debt to name a few. Challenges, fire, COVID, flood, hailstorms. This council has risen to the occasion and continue to support our communities and keep moving forward. We have continued to work for all of Coringamite. Each town has its own individual needs and I believe we have been able to achieve something for everyone in this council's term. Council is not just about rates, rubbish and roads, but about looking after our community, developing community infrastructure and providing economic opportunities for business and population, and population increases. I particularly um, congratulate Brooke and uh, Penny for the layout of the report, and particularly the front cover with Mad Elfin on the front, as you know, I'm <laughs> particular to that. Um, well done to everyone for all your work. It hasn't been easy, but if you're, you have all worked hard and worked together. You have looked outside the box to achieve things, and I congratulate you all. So thank you, and I support the recommendation. Thanks, Councillor Brown. Councillors, any further comment? Councillor Kennedy. small thing, uh, being relatively new on council, having only been here three months um, since the by-election. And I just wanted to say um, how wonderfully supported I've been since I've come on to council and I really, really appreciate um, everything that's been done and all the help I've been given uh, on the learning curve that I'm on and it's such a steep one. And, um, you know, when I look at what council does, it's such a um, almost a dizzying um, <laughs> amount of work that you need to do and you're across um, so many different facets of the community. Um, there's a lot to learn. 
but I've really enjoyed um, the time I've had here so far and appreciate um, the help I've been given very much. But since I have been here, um, I've observed an excellent culture in this organisation. It's so impressive. Um, there's a real willingness um, to listen to the community and to understand the needs of the community. And, you know, I'm just hearing it um, from uh, the senior staff, um, the mayor and the other councillors and, and even um, all the staff, um, how, how they're always wanting to know what the community um, wants, um, how, how they can um, communicate them with them better and um, improve all the processes um, within council. So, you know, I've, I found that really, really impressive and I think that's, um, that this council is, has really got all the right um, uh, ethics um, you know, in terms of dealing with um, the work that they've got to do. So um, I've, I've been very happy um, to have become a councillor and uh, I just want to thank um, the Mayor, um, Mr Trotter, and uh, our CEO, Andrew Mason, and all the other councillors for the work that, that they do and the senior officers. Um, they've got a huge um, and broad array of responsibilities and, uh, um, yeah, I, I admire the work that you all do. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Kennedy. Councillors, any further comment? Councillor Ingleworth. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is an excellent document and um, you know, credit for all those involved in making it. Um, I think one of the things, and most of the things have been covered, but it's what this document doesn't say, I think, that is probably um, almost as important, if not more important, as far as our future goes. Um, what it doesn't say is that there's funds there that will allow the next council to accelerate out of this uh, COVID recession. Um, I'd also take the opportunity to thank the ratepayers um, for allowing us to spend the money that they contribute. Um, uh, I don't think for a minute that, um, you know, running a, a, a small business in the, this time is, uh, is easy. Um, being in council, ultimately, um, you spend money, you don't make money, and um, that money comes from ratepayers, as I mentioned before. I think the, um, I think the thing is, is that um, government organisations and government employees, um, which, well, certainly I am, but um, we need to actually take a step back and realise that we're still getting a paycheck um, and uh, private enterprise isn't. And so that's a challenge, I guess, for the next council. Um, some of the things that, that aren't necessarily in this document that I think are worthy of uh, credit are, you know, some of the futurist stuff where we've created a town plan for Simpson, um, identifying peat um, as being not only a Karangamite issue with fires, but also with climate change drying out swamps all over the state. Um, the fact is, is that peat is going to be a considerable issue um, as it uh, billows toxic smoke and can last for, in some cases, years to burn out. The, um, the work in international driver road trauma, um, I'd like to a special mention for all those locals down in Port Campbell that, um, that helped me and indeed council, um, putting together a package of um, improvements and recommendations, um, the, and also for helping in the volunteer emergency services recommendations that were put to the state um, government after the tragedy um, uh, at ESA with Poe and Andy. Um, this council also um, fought the closure of its own sale yards uh, when it was under threat and I think that that is a, is, is a strategic thing that council um, had to make some tough calls on and made them. Um, the female change facilities is also something that I think this council should be extremely proud because they were um, fairly poor um, and additionally um, the 
were not only the playground at Port Campbell, but also the disabled toilet block for our, not only our locals, but also the visitors. I think that that was an important thing also. Um, roads are obviously an issue. The state roads, well, I drove to, from Port Campbell to here today and it's, it's look, I can't sugarcoat it. It's, it's no better. It's probably, if anything, it's worse than what it was in 2016. And, and that's something that, um, that we all have to accept that um, hopefully the next council can get some more grip than what we did. Thanks, Councillor Longworth. Councillors, any further comments? Yeah, I'd just like to add, um, like, this is the annual report. It's available. It's on the website. Um, I'd urge people to uh, take it up and have a look at it. It's our report card, not only the ratepayers, but it's also our report card to state government as well. Um, and it goes into great detail of... I often get um, <coughs> questions about where, where do our rates go? I'm not getting good value for my rates. Well, it's all itemised in there, down to the last dollar, where that rate, del uh, rate um, dollar goes, um, and for the grants money that we receive as well. I think um, rates <coughs> account for about 46% of the council's income. The rest comes from um, uh, grants and uh, fees and charges, and that's all itemised in that um, annual report. Um, it gives a good indication of where our um, workers uh, are deployed, what, it, what fields they operate in. Um, so if you have questions, any questions about council, most of it is contained in that report. And I would urge people to either go online or give the front office a, a, a ring or go into the front office and see if you can pick up a copy. Because it, it, it's, it really is our report card to the community. So without any further ado, I'll put the uh, motion. All those in favour? Carried. We'll move on to um, item 10.2, the finance report, September 2020. Mr Ray, thank you. Uh, thanks, Mayor, and, and through you. Uh, the report uh, recommends that Council just note uh, the financial position for the first quarter of the current financial year. So that's as at 30 September uh, 2020. Uh, Council, the starting position for the year, just to confirm, is $21.865 million. Um, uh, there was a conflicting figure in, in the report, and I do apologise for that. Council adopted the budget uh, for 2021 in June uh, of this year, and in August uh, approved a significant um, amount of carry-forward projects into the, the current financial year. Those carry-forward projects have been are also reflected in the report you see this evening. Uh, Council's cash position, or, or sorry, performance to budget as at the end of September is favourable to almost $1.8 million uh, when compared to budget, and that's probably due to timing differences as a consequence of grants received in advance or projects completed ahead of, ahead of schedule. Uh, the major variations are documented in the report, Mayor, uh, and Council's financial performance as at the 30th of September uh, remains on target uh, in accordance with Council's budget. Uh, and Council is asked to receive the report, uh, noting that the next report due to Council will be in January uh, of 2021. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Mr Ray. Councillors, the uh, recommendation is <coughs> before you. Have someone move the recommendation? Councillor Castrain, do we have a seconder? Councillor Kennedy. Councillor Castrain. Yes, thank you, Mr <coughs> Mayor. I'm happy with the, the way finances are tracking at the moment, the project delivery seems to be uh, to be on track as well. As Mr Ray mentioned, that uh, the timing of grant payments is what's impacting the budget at this time. So, um, yep, happy with it to, to uh, move the motion. Thanks, Councillor Strain. Councillor Kennedy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, I'm happy to receive this report. Um, the, variance, the variances are mostly favourable and they're very clearly explained. Uh, but most importantly, uh, Council's forecast cash cash position uh, for 30 June next year is comfortably above its target, so I'm very happy to accept the report as it is. Thanks, Councillor Kennedy. Councillors, any further comment? Um, I'd just like to add, um, I think uh, the amount of work that goes into this is probably underestimated. In a year like this, uh, it's been a 
constantly moving feast with uh, grant money, COVID money. Um, uh, it's um, been a very testing time for our financial team for them to be able to put it all together and to stay on top of it and, and keep track of where all that funding is going is, is uh, a mammoth effort. So uh, our thanks to the finance team for what they have done in uh, these very, very challenging times. And um, so um, without any further ado, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Carried. Uh, we'll move on to item 10.3, Record of Assembly of Councillors. Mr Mason, thank you. Uh, thank you through, Mr Mayor. Very simply, uh, there is one Record of Assembly for Council to accept, the final one for this Council to accept. Thanks, Councillors. Can I have someone move the... Uh, Councillor Brown, do have a seconder? Mm -hmm. Councillor Durant, Councillor Brown, any comment? No, thank you. Procedural. I had Ms. to Durant. do the last one, I thought. <laughs> No further comment. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? <coughs> Carried. Uh, councillors, we'll move on to item 11, other business. Do we have any other business? Councillor Strain. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I've waited to the end of the meeting just to, to have a, a wrap-up. I'm sure other councillors will have comments to make. In saying that, I'm proud of what we've achieved as a council over the past four years and the way that we've worked together to make that happen. There have been many highs, just to name a few. The, we've just talked about the prudent, prudent financial management, which has not only made us debt free, but also gave us the reserves to react quickly to the COVID virus in freezing rates and allocating the $4.8 million stimulus package. The completion of the Castle Carey Bridge, streetscape works in Camperdown and Tim Boone. The significant funding we received for the Shipwreck Coast Master Plan. And I hope that work uh, on that has been identified progress as quickly so that when international travel is possible, there isn't disruption through construction. The 12 Apostles Rail Trail receiving the $4.5 million funding from the state government and a huge highlight in the past fortnight already mentioned was the $1.18 million of funding for planning to relocate the Hampton Specialist School and Trang College P4 campuses to the Strong Street site. I'd like to give a big thank you to the Upper House member, Minister Gail Tierney, for her support in getting this much needed project off the ground. Of course, there have been terrible lows. St Patrick's Day fires that had a devastating impact on our community, in particular those people who lost homes, pastures, shedding, fencing and stock. But through it all, the resilience of our communities was incredibly strong. The devastating loss of Ross and Andy Powell while unselfishly doing what they loved, volunteering for their community by carrying out a rescue along our dangerous coastline. The death of Councillor Bev MacArthur's son Andrew in a dreadful accident in March 2018 and the unexpected passing of Councillor Wayne Oakes in March this year. And of course the financial, economic and social impacts of the COVID-19 virus will be felt for many years to come. No doubt the next council will continue to work hard and advocate strongly for our shire with so many challenges ahead. I'd like to thank my fellow councillors for their support and congratulate them on their dedication and diligence in representing their residents. This has been done in a respectful manner and we've been able to achieve much. To retiring councillors, self Mayor Trotter, Councillor Brown, Councillor Durant and Councillor Illingworth, I wish you all the best in your post-council life. Congratulations to Councillor Beard on her re-election. It's no secret that Jo's returned unopposed because she does a great job. I'd also like to mention and thank the families of our councillors who provide so much support and in many cases a sounding board or a calming word. It's not a nine to five job and there are many outings and dinners interrupted by a phone call or query. My thanks to the 266 staff under the guidance of CEO Andrew Mason who've worked hard to deliver the projects and tasks that we set out. They have been amazing in how seamlessly they have adapted to COVID conditions and have done a great job. My thanks also to our state and federal MPs for their continued interest in our council and for their support and advice. Krangamite Shire has a well-earned reputation in the local government sector for the steady and respectful way we do business and this is reflected in the grant funding we receive and the doors that we can open. It's been a pleasure and a privilege to represent Central Ward over the past 18 years. Camperdown, Terang and the surrounding community are fantastic to work with and I'm grateful for the support of the residents. I wish the incoming council all the very best for the next four years. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Castrain. Councillors, any other business? Councillor Duran. Excuse me. 
Tonight we've heard of uh, the key defining issues and achievements uh, during our term of office. I would also like to mention just a few other things that have been key moments for me. They are indicative of the range of activities councillors take part in. They are not big ticket items, but they are all important. To name just a few. Supporting the local community in their advocacy for better planning processes around wind farm infrastructure laying a council wreath on Anzac days and speaking at a Nurit Remembrance Day ceremony. Speaking about my views on reconciliation at St Thomas's Church in Tarang. Helping to facilitate and guide the setting up of the Tarang Nurit Arts in the Avenues project. Supporting and representing residents who needed to get things done or things changed, whether it be a footpath, a street light, a drain or a disabled car park supporting community planning project funding and the continued provision of council services and service levels, particularly to the frail, aged, disabled and young children. Representing councillors and the community at the handing over of Mount Nurat was a very special day for me and the opportunity to speak about the Indigenous and non-Indigenous significance of the Mount was a great privilege and one I will always remember with great pride. I am pleased to have been part of a council that has not been driven by personal gain or popularity and one that has consciously strived to adopt and act on strong principles of good governance. Over the weekend, I found the candidate statement that I prepared for the 2016 elections. Amongst other things, I said that I would make decisions based on equity and fairness and in the best interests of all residents. I have always done this and hope that others have regarded my decisions in this light as well. I have found the last four years both challenging, enjoyable and immensely rewarding. I have been out of my comfort zone more often than I have been in it. And I would like to thank everyone who's given me encouragement and support, particularly my poor husband, Rob, who has patiently put up with all that goes with, that goes with this role. Thank you to Mr Mason and the executive team for their professionalism and support, and especially to my fellow councillors, and I wish you all the very best for whatever the future might bring. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Durant. Councillors, any further comment? Councillor Brown. Okay. Thank you, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, and this is my final statement too, as, as a councillor. Well, I made it. The dynamics <laughs> of our first year were challenging, but we got through it. I would like to thank my fellow councillors and officers for your support during this time, as I doubt I would have made it through without it. Personally, I have grown and gained confidence. I have learned a lot, and I hope that I can use this knowledge in whatever is next for me. I've had three more grandchildren in these four years, which has been a bit of a juggle but at, time, at times, but also a joy, and I look forward to being able to spend more time with him. I would like to pay my respects to Wayne Oakes, who left us all too soon, and welcome Geraldine, who was thrown in at the deep end at the end of our council term. Achievements I would like to be remembered for are <coughs> the building capacity of Kerangamite community workshops, workshops designed and organised by Gary Moorfield, which have given our community invaluable knowledge for building community groups. The painting of the Lismore Golf Club water tower. Thank you to Rory for listening and taking up the challenge to do this project. It hasn't been easy, but certainly well worth it. Skipton Skate Park. A, a Skipton community initiative, the Skipton community got to behind this project with the Skipton Lions Club and have now been funded through the federal government. This will be a wonderful project for Skipton. Skipton Roadhouse, an ongoing issue of access and safety at the Roadhouse. An upgrade of front tarmac has been negotiated and will be a great improvement for all who use it. Thank you to Brooke Love for your support and negotiations. Darren Allen Streetscape, a new toilet block, another controversial project, as toilets seem to be, but one that has been identified through the community plans for a long time. In the planning stages now, also funded through the federal government. I have spent many hours looking at roads, photographing potholes, etc. and with the assistance of council, we have been able to resolve these issues. Working together with our communities and attending community meetings has been a highlight 
working with staff to work through issues and achieve a resolution a highlight. I have done my best to take up any opportunities that came my way to achieve things and I, I have now a wealth of learnings and experiences. The challenges, COVID, fires, hailstorms, we work through them. Working with the community to achieve goals is also a challenge. We are just, but we just kept moving forward to get things done. The future. Council is about to have a renewal, a new council with a mixture of council experience, new members with a wealth of life experiences, I think will be a successful council. Unresolved, I would like to have been able to have made some forward with the Camperdown Caravan Park Botanic Gardens issues um, to resolve those, access to Lake Bull and Merai um, for the track around the base for fishermen, and something more for Skipton, such as an art project at the Grain Core silos. But these are not to be in, in my time, but I hope that some resolution will happen in the future. Well, that is about all I can say. Thank you to you all. Being a councillor has been an honour and a privilege, and I look forward to the next chapter of life and wish you all the best for the future. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Brown. Councillors, any further comments? Councillor Ellingworth. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, I did have a bit of a list here of things I can boast about, but I, I don't know that I want to go down that path. Um, I think one of the things that I've learned as a councillor and listening to the people is um, the capacity to, um, to change. And um, I certainly didn't come on to council as some sort of environmental guru. Um, Although um, I did um, stand there on the pier with everyone else um, fighting the, um, the oil in the bite campaign that many people remember and, and could see very clearly how um, an oil spill would, would, um, would trash our economy and so on. And um, I suppose uh, for me, uh, the realisation that we need to protect our environment um, it's the key to our fishing industry, tourism, farming, and, uh, and it has a great impact on, on numerous things in our shire that we probably take for granted at times. Um, to describe the coast, um, for me, it's, you know, and Princetown, Port Campbell, and Peterborough, you know, those, the wetlands and estuaries, it's a beauty that is rare. Um, it's very peaceful. The water twists and turns and has done for thousands of years. Birds fly in from overseas, they mate and mate, uh, seek refuge, rare fish, pristine water, and the seals often swim up into the rivers. We have uh, endangered hooded orchids, um, endangered flora and fauna, um, and, uh, and plants that are endemic. They're only found um, on our coastline. And I think when, when you realise that, you realise how important that the role is for, um, well, for all of us, but in particular to, to be able to send that message from the Coastal Ward. And so I, I hope that Jamie Vogels um, and Kate Macon um, from the Tim Boone Ward, I, I hope that they, they get it because um, the people around Port Campbell and the surrounds will certainly uh, tell you um, what it's all about. So, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Ingworth. Councillors, any further comment? Um, yeah, just in closing, um, oh, we've still got one item to go, but I, I'd like to um, say how I've enjoyed my time on Council. Um, it's been an immense, uh, immensely uh, learning experience for me. It's um, I know it's certainly taken me out of my comfort zone at times, and uh, but uh, I have learned so much. And I think one of the important things that, as councillors, that we get out of um, becoming councillors is um, developing the ability to listen. Um, you know, we're, as politicians, you're probably uh, pretty good at um, make, making your opinions known and uh, and uh, broadcasting your thoughts. But uh, a really important uh, skill for a councillor is that ability to listen, to listen to your community and to listen to people's um, uh, 
uh, concerns and complaints, no matter how trivial, trivial um, they may be, because they may be trivial in your, trivial in your eyes, but uh, for the person that's making them, it, it's quite often a very important factor in their life. And um, so I think uh, that ability to listen and to be, have some empathy for the people that you're serving uh, is a really good quality. And um, I've had a look at the list of candidates that are standing for election and I th it fills me with confidence because I think um, that they're all good people. You know, uh, you don't play elections uh, at this time and it's not the role of me to do that. But I think that the entire field of candidates that we've got standing is is going to augur well for the next council. And um, uh, so um, I'm thankful for those people to putting up their hands. It's it's not a it's something that should be considered. It's something that you shouldn't go into lightly. And um, I'd like to congratulate congratulate all the candidates for putting up their hand and and, and coming forward. I know that they'll enjoy their time in council. I have. And um, my only regret is probably that I didn't start earlier. Um, see, I, I've reached a stage of life where I probably want to slow down and uh, my body's telling me that I should be slowing down as well. So um, I'd implore people that uh, do intend to stand for um, public office to uh, probably do it earlier in your life. Put your hand up and uh, it's a great way to get experience. So. Uh, We'll move on to um, the, the open forum. We have one question from Mr. John's uh, Glaze Book of Terrain. Um, the um, United States Kerangamai Shire has a budget uh, in excess of $5 million and has plans to spend millions in promoting tourism. Uh, David Ray is telling Ratepayers Council is forced to outsource its aged and disability home maintenance services because it is too expensive. Um, I um, ask, is, uh, is this a lie? Well, uh, I'll refer that to, Kent, uh, to uh, Mr Ray. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, thank you, and I thank uh, Mr Glazebrook for his, for his question. Uh, I think by way of background, it's important to probably put this in context. I'd previously received a complaint from Mr Glazebrook, I believe, um, around April of May this year in response to a quotation he sought from Council for Home Modification Services. Uh, we certainly provided that quotation to Mr Glazebrook and Mr Glazebrook was dissatisfied uh, with the material component uh, associated uh, with, that, with that quotation. Uh, we advised Mr Glazebrook um, in terms of the response to his complaint that he, he uh, could seek uh, alternatives uh, to provide uh, materials, um, and certainly our officers, as I understand it, uh, would have, or did advise Mr Glazebrook that he could source his own materials and we could um, make the home modifications with the contract labour. Um, Mr Glazebrook had also um, has, the, has the view that uh, the council should be providing um, these home modification services with employed labour. Uh, we've certainly considered that in the past. It's not cost effective for, for ratepayers to do so, to employ a full-time tradesperson uh, where there's probably a, a fraction of the work um, in, in the community. Uh, contracting at the service also provides opportunities for small businesses uh, in our community as, as well. So there's an economic um, development aspect associated with that. I would encourage uh, Mr Glazebrook uh, to make contact with Council. We can certainly fit those home modifications uh, and if he wishes to uh, source materials uh, from an alternate provider, we, we'd happily accommodate that. Uh, there's some other elements to Mr Glazebrook's statement. I can confirm Council's budget for the current financial year it does show a surplus of over $5 million. That's an accounting result, however. Uh, a better reflection of Council's budget is the cash, cash result and that's a deficit of around about $2.7 million uh, for, the, for the current <coughs> financial year. Uh, Mayor, uh, Council's not investing millions in, in tourism promotion. In fact, the um, allocation in Council's budget this financial year is around about $480,000 uh, in, in tourism services, and that includes the Port Campbell BIC. Uh, Council 
effectively through the provision of, of predominantly grants via state and federal government, is investing almost $2 million into age and disability services. And I think I just acknowledge that there is a significant uh, infrastructure investment in capital this year uh, that supports a range of services and industries, and that includes, uh, cl uh, includes tourism. So once again, I thank uh, Mr Glazebrook for his question, and I would invite him to make contact with our team again in order to satisfy his, his, his needs. Thank you, Mr A. Well, uh, we don't have any confidential items tonight, so that brings us to uh, the end of the meeting. I'd like to thank everyone for their attendance. Um, I'd like to wish you all well, whether you're staying on council or departing. Um, so uh, uh, the uh, next council meeting will be in November with a new council. Um, we uh, go out of office this weekend. Mr Mason will be um, in charge until the uh, new councillors are sworn in. So um, thank you. Thanks for tuning in tonight. And I now have pleasure in closing the meeting. Thank you. Sure.